Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And I hope you all are having a great weekend. So, yesterday evening I came across this article. The majority of Bitcoin trading is a hoax. New study finds. And this comes from the CNBC.com website. The article goes on to state that 95% of spot Bitcoin trading volume is fake by unregulated exchanges, according to a study from Bitwise this week. The firm analyzed the top 81 crypto exchanges by volume on industry site, coinmarketcap.com. They report an aggregated $6 billion in average daily Bitcoin volume. The study finds that only 200 and $73 million of that is legitimate. People looked at cryptocurrency and said this market is a mess. That's because they were looking at data that was manipulated, says Matthew Hogan, global head of research at Bitwise. So, you know, um, several months ago, we did uh, a video uh, that talked about the unprecedented level of wash trading that some studies had showed to go on um, over these centralized exchanges over 90%. The Bitwise study finds it to be about 95% with only uh, about $273 million legitimate in a mark in a uh in uh, bitcoin trading which holds a market cap of over about 70 billion dollars right now with only 273 million dollars is legitimate according to this study so this is a this is a huge huge problem uh and uh, this is a problem many of us have been aware of for quite a bit of time now, the dangers of ignoring a problem like this can be catastrophic. As we've seen, it's been catastrophic. And that's uh, why we can't, a lot of us can't make any money. It's why a lot of us have lost so much money. Yet we continue to push on. So let's talk about a little bit today. What are possibly some of the things we can do to, to prevent this and to, and to, and to stop this? Right or or at least protect ourselves from this to a great degree. You know, well, you know, as the article says, and I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not going to read the entire article, um, but the the problem is centralized exchanges are incentivized by us to create uh, more uh, volume. You know, in their exchanges. You know, obviously if we don't see a lot of volume in exchange. We're not going to want to trade on it. And so it becomes so ridiculous that, uh, and let me just read this part of the article here. I think it's very important. The San Francisco based firm compared that Coinbase Pro, which reports about $27 million in average daily volume in Bitcoin, its median spread or difference between the price a seller wants and the price a buyer wants. For Bitcoin was about one cent. That scenario passed Bitwise's test for having real volume. Okay, right. They're talking about the spreads. And, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit later about some of the solutions to this. But they're talking about the spreads amongst the exchanges. Uh, the, the difference between the buy and the, and the sell orders. But in another stark comparison, Coinbeanie, the biggest record, reported rider exchange on CoinMarketCap.com, has a nearly $15 spread. Hogan said they found other extreme examples of exchanges with a spread of more than $300. It is surprising that an exchange with almost 18 times the volume of Coinbase Pro would have a spread that is 1,500 times larger, Bitwise said in the report. Uh, you know, so that goes to show you uh, right there that the uh, the rug is being pulled from under our feet, that the volume is not there. These spreads are telling the story. 
uh, that the volume cannot be correct. Otherwise, the spreads would close down and you would see the vast liquidity. Uh, but you're not getting that because the volume is not there with many of these exchanges. Now, I don't know why they get why we continue to report many of these exchanges as the big ex biggest exchanges and uh, why we continue to uh, allow them to be listed on. Uh, you know, my opinion is coin market cap should take them off their services um, when uh, when there any there's any type of uh, suspicion of that type of um activity uh now with the much larger exchanges like when you start to get up to like uh coinbase and you start to get up to like binance and these very large exchanges uh this what has happened with this is even if there were many elements of wash trading and uh price manipulation the large amount of liquidity that comes through those exchanges uh has kind of in a self-correcting way, start to close a lot of that down because you still have very highly liquid markets. Uh, the problem with these much smaller exchanges that are trying to appear to be large is that the smoke and mirrors cannot address the issue of lack of liquidity, right? So let's talk about some of the possible solutions that uh, we can look at and what might be a, a good situation for what are the, what is the actual price of some of these cryptocurrencies and how to protect ourselves. So the first part might be, or, or in my opinion, one of the best ways to protect yourself, which some people may not agree with. I know a lot won't, uh, even if they agree with it, a lot of people won't do it because I think a lot of us are stuck in our ways. And that is centralized, centralized exchanges that are not regulated, right? The, uh, centralized exchanges that flee regulation and go to other countries. Uh, these are exchanges that we should probably make a conscious decision not to even trade on uh, if they're running. Um, and uh, I won't just say the United States, you know, even, even though uh, I live in the United States and we have a very high level of regulation with the securities industry, but uh, I won't say that it should only occur in the United States because there are some uh, nations out there that as well have uh, regulation on par with the United States or even a great deal higher. But the problem is once these exchanges start running, uh, that's kind of a bad sign because it means they're trying to avoid regulation to a great degree. And of course, we know a lot of these regulations are in place to protect people from these very things. So Centralized exchanges would be the number one problem, in my opinion, with this, unless they are regulated, uh, and that would include the United States and around the world. Some of them don't get regulated in the United States, they run, and the reason they do that is because they could have liquidity issues and they need to be able to pump out uh, a lot of various projects and, and um, machinations to get money to stay afloat. Um, and so, uh, centralized exchanges that are out of that category, uh, I, in my opinion would be a bad sign for you being a victim uh, of this, uh, of this, uh, uh, false volume. So something like the solution for me would be, uh, decentralized exchanges. Now, as we, as we know, decentralized exchanges have a great deal less volume than centralized exchanges. But that would be natural to this study if there's only 273 million actual dollars in the market, <laughs> then, um, you know, then you would have to, that would have to be reflected in trading and decentralized exchanges with their low liquidity and their low volume uh, is representative of the accuracy of that uh, and that way you won't be burnt. Of course, if you want to play the casino game, if you want to play the gambling game, then centralized exchanges, you can do that. But then, you know, the market will uh, kick you in the rear uh, at some point in time. Another thing I think is uh, market makers, right? A lot of these cryptocurrencies don't have market makers. Uh, I, you know, what I believe is at this point in time, many of the uh, altcoins, 
top 10 cryptocurrencies. They could have already went out and purchased, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, did partnerships with market makers, right? And to have market makers in place where the uh, the uh, spreads are, um, are uh, more narrow uh, and uh, the price is a great deal more stable than it's been. But you need market makers, you need firms providing liquidity. And there are firms out there that do that. Uh, and, uh, you know, those things should be in place. It should be reported to be in place. So we know that there is a great deal of stability and there is, is a great deal of liquidity. Um, you know, another thing is just how the cryptocurrency market works in general with the projects. Uh, are these projects uh sustainable right uh do they uh have a way to funnel uh money into them uh due to the demand factors right and for me uh what makes a lot more great deal more sense than what i'm seeing in a lot of cryptocurrencies is use cases and what you could get in uh, the aspect well what am i my um one of the, uh, the the easiest ways for me to evaluate the value of cryptocurrencies through a project like social networks, in some cases, g gaming applications, uh, because people are actually using these things day to day. And you can see the user base. And uh, if there's a large user base there, that means there's attention value there. There's some type of demand or reason to be there. There's some type of need being met. And so, uh, you know, in that regard, there, uh, those are good indicators of something that's going to hold value and, and, and create that value. Now, of course, the problem with Bitcoin being so decentralized on this network, there's not always a lot of incentive to go into Bitcoin with the exception of maybe if you're in a country that suffers from a great deal of hyperinflation, you want to shelter some of your money or you want to illegally take your money out of a nation that has made it illegal for you to do that right and so in those cases you will find this demand for bitcoin but that that demand wouldn't be large enough to create this sustainable price and so in order for the exchanges to stay in business now they are under pressure to make it appear that there is more volume of trade than it is because they need to get you in. They need to get you trading so that their business remains, um, you know, uh, uh, doesn't become uh, obsolete or you don't use it or, or whatever the case may be. So um, market makers, you need market makers. You need a project that grows a lot of user base that which we can see. Um. And it needs to be a demand there for it uh, in a branding situation like Bitcoin. However, uh, without the lack of incentive to participate in Bitcoin, because you don't need to use Bitcoin, right? The only people who need to use Bitcoin are people who suffer from hyperinflation and people who need to hide their money. Uh, the rest of the world at this point may not need to use Bitcoin or at least not at the demand that it'll take for the market, the true market value to go beyond $273 million if this study is correct. Now, I'm more, I'm more on the side that it is correct. It makes a great deal of sense that it would be correct that 95% of the uh, uh volume of trade would be false uh that would pretty much attest to the story we've gotten with cryptocurrency and bitcoin over the course of the last few years with the big price gains and the big price falls that those would be great symptoms of what you would get with a lot of fake volume and watch trading um and so uh i'm more so side with that so with looking at true users, true demand, true user base, something you can value easy, like in the idea of a social network, you, each user, you can pretty much determine what each value of each user is, right? Market makers, does it have market makers where there is a, a close spread and there is a lot of liquidity between value? And um, 
you know, is it on a decentralized exchange where the volume was going to be uh, not the problem of a centralized exchange wanting to beef up the price so they can make more money, want to watch trade so they can make more money. And one project in mind that does all of those things underlined is BitcoinMYK.com. BitcoinMYK.com, a universal cryptocurrency that allows you to move your represented Bitcoin value across the exchanges that builds a network of people. You can look at the users and start to evaluate what the value actually is in that network effect that trades on a decentralized exchange and that has market makers in it, keeping a stable price and moving that coin consistently along. We'll leave a link in the description for that project as well. But I think it's guys, it's time, uh, people out there in cryptocurrency, that we get serious about exactly what type of value we're going to get out of cryptocurrency. I think it's time we get serious about it's probably really only 273 legitimate dollars in cryptocurrency. When 270 million dollars goes into the cryptocurrency market it can have an effect of 50 times a hundred times through the market effect but there's still only actually 270 million dollars in that market right it's not like a actual 70 billion dollars went into that market so these are all the things we need to be aware of we need to be serious about it we need comprehensible plans uh, that solve this problem that we participate in, not just looking the other way, thinking things are going to get better. They're not going to get any better until we address the issue at hand. One way to do that, join our project. Let's create something that really works and that is really sustainable. If you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.